to another Windows Virtual Machine tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009. Now I know most of you have probably never heard of this version of Windows. Uh, it's a very interesting version of Windows, uh, especially for the fact that it is, it is based on Windows XP Service Pack 3. Uh, but it is still supported to this day and you will still get support using this for five full years after 2014 that means that you're going to get support until april 2019 uh, and it's just a very interesting version of windows and we're going to be taking a look at how to uh, install today uh, i'm going to be using vmware workstation of course like always but you can use any uh, software that you have or um, you can install this on a uh, actual uh, physical PC. Uh, anyway, uh, let's just get started. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go down uh, under this video in the uh, video description and download um, a trial version of this. Now that is the only version that I could find. This is actually an official version of this, uh, still hosted by Microsoft to this day. Uh, so that's you know kind of interesting, uh, but. Uh, since Microsoft has uh, stopped supporting Windows XP, it's not going to be a surprise if they stop uh, hosting this download for a Windows XP based product. So um, if they uh, stop hosting that download, I'm going to uh, be uploading that uh, to Mediafire or something like that, but uh, that's not for now. So anyway, um, and there's also going to be, like always, a... Uh, product key for this version of Windows down below as well. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your uh, whatever virtual machine software that, that you're using. You're going to want to create a new virtual machine. Uh, and you're going to want uh, to, now I'm on uh, VMware here. Uh, and again, if you're using uh, another virtual machine software, you're not going to have these two options. I'm just going to select uh, on the typical recommended option because that's really all you need for this. And then you're just going to want to press next. And you're going to want to select, I will install the operating system later, and then press next. And you're going to want to set the operating system as a Microsoft Windows, and the version as Windows XP Professional. Uh, and then you want to click next, and uh, give it a name. I'm just going to call it Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009. And if you're wondering, um, POS stands for Point of Sales and not what you're thinking it stands for. Um, and this is basically going to be used uh, on uh, ATMs and you know that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, continuing, I just want to press next, um, and you want to uh, select store the virtual disk as a single file. And for the uh, maximum hard disk size, the uh, minimum size that is actually uh, required for this version of Windows is 520 megabytes, which is insanely small for a uh, installer, but uh, or for any version of Windows, um, but if you're going to be using this for more than just hosting uh, like an ATM, which I'm sure you're not going to be using this for, uh, I would give it at least, uh, you know, maybe 10 gigabytes, you know, of course you can go more than that if you want. Uh, and you're going to want to store the virtual disk as a single file, and then click next. And now what you want to do is you want to select the customized hardware option. And uh, for the um, memory, again, if you don't have uh, that much RAM uh, on your computer, this version only needs 64 megs of RAM. And as you can see, uh, Windows XP needs 128 megs of RAM, but we're just going to keep it uh, at the uh, 500, 512, uh, which is uh, the actual recommended preset uh, by VMware. Uh, processors is obviously going to be one. Uh, for the uh, CD DVD drive, you want to use uh, the ISO image file that you downloaded. And again, that link is, is going to be down below in the video description. All right, and once you have that selected, that's really all that you need uh, to configure in here. So you just want to click on the close button down here and then click finish. And it's going to pop up with a uh, new virtual machine. Now, unlike uh, all of those um, other Windows beta builds that I do, we're not going to actually have to set uh, the date back on this, so um, you, you don't have to deal with that if you're using uh, something like Oracle VM VirtualBox, which I've heard uh, sometimes has issues uh, with getting into the BIOS on that. Um, so all you have to do is just power on this virtual machine, and again, if you're uh, 
on a real computer, uh, of course, you would have already turned it on by now. Uh, and it's going to boot uh, to a pretty familiar Windows XP uh, boot screen, but I can assure you it's not Windows XP, but it is, of course, based off of Windows XP Service Pack 3. And like I said, this is going to get support until April 2019, so, um, of course, way longer uh, than the standard uh, Windows XP support. But anyway, so here we are uh, in the actual setup program, and so it's going to basically guide you uh, to, to setting up Windows Embedded POS already 2009. So we're just going to select the next button down here, and there's two modes uh, to this setup. There is a uh, interactive setup and an unattended setup. Now, uh, the second option, apparently, you need to apply something called an answer file, which I'm not really sure how to create. I guess you would uh, select it uh, on the next step, and it, it, as you can see here, you, uh, you have an option uh, as a uh, remote network resource. Now, this is obviously because um, this is based, or rather, this is made for uh, point of sale systems, and you know, people that are going to take the time and uh, actually set those up are not going to want to sit through this entire uh, boring and long install process when they could have other things they could be doing. So that is why this option is here, but for us, we're just going to select the first option, which is the interactive setup, which will uh, take you through the uh, uh, entire process one by one. So we're just going to select next uh, on, on the interactive setup. And now you're going to you want to enter your 25 character product key. Now this is again going to be down below. Uh, as well. Once you've entered your 25 character product key, you're just going to want to select next and you're going to want to select I accept the license agreement and click next once again and now you just want to type in your name and uh, your organization if you have any and just select next. Um, and for the storage driver, um, you're not for uh, install third-party storage drivers. Um, again, we don't have uh, a disk for um, that, you know, virtual hard drives but if you're on like an like a if you're on like a physical computer and it like asks you for that you might want to get that somewhere but uh worst one is like no additional storage drivers uh, are required so all right so on this screen you just basically want to go with the first option that says no additional storage drivers are required un unless you plan on i guess like you know adding other drivers to it then you're gonna have to select the second option and you're gonna have to uh, supply those drivers yourself we're just gonna select the first option here and select next and it's going to load uh, the disk information and now you're going to get uh to a configuration screen as you can see on here it says minimum required partition size is 520 megabytes as I mentioned, really small for any operating system. So anyway, we just want to select it on this unpartitioned space right here, and you want to select create partition, and uh, you want to use uh, just you know whatever uh, defaults that it gives you, un unless you want to you know dual boot this or something like that, which we're not going to be doing in this video. So I just select enter or OK, and now you want to select partition one and click next. And for the file system, you want to use NTFS and not FAT32. For the allocation unit size, you just want to keep it as default. And for the volume label, uh, you can type in anything. I'm just going to call it POS ready, unless you just want to leave it as like new volume. Uh, and for the drive letter, obviously just keep it as C, unless you just want to change that as well. And now you just want to click next and it's going to format the drive. Or actually, it's going to ask us about our uh, language settings, apparently. So I'm just going to select this. I'm just going to keep this as a default because this is all right uh, so far. And down here, it's talking about uh, supplemental language support, uh, which we don't really need to worry about unless you uh, are going to be using this where you need you know, more languages, I guess. But I'm, I'm not going to worry about that right now. So just select Next. And uh, this is all... You know, uh, correct for me now. Of course, you, you might want to change it as well. So just select next. Um, and for the installation type, now this is probably one of the most important things. You can do uh, the typical option, the minimum option, or the custom option. Now I'm just going to go uh, with the plain old uh, typical option just to save video time. Now you can of course go uh, with the custom option uh, if you want to you know make this and uh, just like add 
all these features to it that it has or if you want to like not install certain things or if you don't have that much hard drive space you can go with the uh, minimum option and you can see only requires 520 megabytes of hard drive space so again really 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 small uh, operating system once again so I'm just going to go with the typical option and just select next and now you want to give your computer a name I'm just going to call it POS ready 2009 and you want to select or you want to create an administrator password all right once you have entered uh, your administrator password it's going to bring up uh, your TCP IP settings and we're not going to worry about this right now because uh, it says here that IP settings can be assigned automatically if your network supports uh, this capability which most networks do um, but if yours doesn't then you want to enter all that information here manually uh, but I'm just gonna leave it blank because I know that that uh, my network does this uh, all automatically so I'm, I'm just gonna leave this blank and just select next and you can join a domain if you want I'm just gonna leave it uh, as join a work group and I'm just gonna leave uh, all these defaults here and I just select next and now it's going to uh, confirm all these settings make sure that they are all right I'll kind of go through here and make sure and then click install it's now going to uh, begin formatting drive C and uh, it's going as you can see here it says setup is formatting your installation partition it's going to take a few minutes and now it is copying the operating system image to the installation partition so uh, this could take some time so I'm going uh, to pause the video and I will come back once uh, we were at the next portion of the installation. Alright, so the entire setup and the first boot process has finished. So now you just want to log in uh, with the administrator account. And then choose the uh, password that you did. And once you have uh, entered that correctly, it's going to uh, log you in. You, you will hear a uh, familiar Windows XP sound. And that's what this basically is. It's basically Windows XP with a new design kind of. As you can see, it has this uh, very interesting theme here. Um, and as you can see, we have down here, keep your computer up to date. And it says automatic updates. You can turn on automatic updates and get updates for this until 2019. So if you're one of those people that doesn't like any version of Windows after Windows XP, so you hate Vista 7 and Windows 8 and you want to keep using Windows XP, this is a great way to do it. And because this is, you're going to get support until 2019. Now, I believe that this will run uh, most programs, I think all programs, since this is just based off of uh, Windows XP Service Pack 3, but I've not, I've not tested that. Uh, but as you can see down here, it just says uh, Service Pack 3. This is basically uh, a, a new skin to Windows XP. Uh, service pack 3 but uh, there are some things that as you can see it's a very minimal uh, installation there's not that much stuff in here there's uh, three things in the uh, all programs panel there's a uh, accessories thing and you just have some some very basic stuff uh, you have uh, startup which is nothing and you have Internet Explorer and that's that, that's basically that's all the, this computer comes with out of the box which uh, of course, since this is made for uh, point-of-sale systems, you're not really going to be using anything on the back end. You're going to be using uh, most likely a uh, you know custom interface that someone would have designed for it. But uh, you can, if you want to, use it just like Windows XP Service Pack 3, but with an extra five years of support. So that's that's basically what it is. Let's see if I can bump up the resolution here. Uh, oh yeah, looks like I can. So let's go up to. Uh, full HD 1920 by 1080 and we'll make this full screen for you guys here so you can see uh, you know again Windows XP Service Pack 3 uh, also with like a new uh, nice you know design wallpaper I think you can, I think you can change it to uh, the bliss one if they have it on here I guess they they don't they, they only have um, a few as you can see, they have a few themes. You can change it to uh, the Windows Classic theme if you want. If you don't like any of the new themes, you can just go back to the old uh, Windows Classic theme. I personally like uh, this theme. Let's go with a small logo and see how that looks. And, yeah, I think it was the same one. Um, 
and I will also run a winver command so you can see what it says here uh, it's Microsoft Windows version 5.1 build 2600 service pack 3 copyright 2007 Microsoft Corporation and this is of course a uh, evaluation copy and it expires but uh, if you wanted to there's many ways that you can uh, you know disable that whole thing but I'm not going to be showing you how to do that in this video obviously but if you wanted to this is basically Windows XP service pack 3 uh, like I've mentioned and uh, so yeah guys, that's that's basically going to wrap it up for Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009. If you guys enjoyed, um, be sure uh, to like and subscribe to the channel. And also, uh, leave a comment down below just you know, telling me what do you think of uh, Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009. Do you think it's a good um, you know, operating system in a whole? Uh, do you think uh, you will you know be using it? Or is it just... Uh, you know, uh, another version of Windows XP that you're probably not really going to want to use. Uh, I would love to hear uh, any feedback that you guys have. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you uh, in the next video.